With Borderlands fresh in theaters and no one going to see it, I thought now would be a perfect opportunity to reflect back on all the many years of video game film adaptations we've had and just how far we've come. And so today I present to you my picks for top 10 best movies of all time, leaving out films that aren't actually based on video games, but are adjacent, such as Wreck-It Ralph, Ready Player One, Free Guy. All three of those movies are better than most of the films on this list, but they do not make the cut. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Before I begin, two quick things of note. Number one, the movies on my list are not on here because they're so true to form. They're so closely resembling their video game counterpart that I had to put them on. These are 10 movies that are just at least decent on their own. And yes, I say decent because actually probably half of these films I don't particularly like. <laughs> But that's how bad video game movies still are today. They have definitely improved over time and we've had TV shows like The Last of Us and the recent Fallout that have been pretty damn good. But we're gonna be talking about the movies. The second thing I wanna say, please subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. If you like top tens, it's a new thing I've started doing a few weeks ago. Every week I'm doing a new top 10 on something relevant. I also, of course, review movies. I rant about film. I do live streams. It's all movies all the time. We'd love to have you. All right, number 10, Angry Birds. Based on the mobile video games, I don't even know how many they made. A couple, just a couple with spinoffs and stuff. And then that stupid Flappy Bird took over and it just really burned the whole thing to the ground, didn't it? You got Jason Sudeikis in this. You have Josh Gad. Not That's not really a selling point at all. But then there's Danny McBride. Bride, Bill Hader, Maya Rudolph. There's a lot of talent. And then again, Josh Gad as well. In this film, doing voices of these characters, the movie's colorful. It's actually very well animated. It's pretty to look at. Yes, it's loud. Yes, it's obnoxious. Yes, there's fart and pee jokes. Maybe not fart, but there's definitely a pee joke. Where one of the birds actually drinks a bunch, swishes it around, plays in it. It's kind of funny. It's juvenile humor, I think, done kind of well, actually. Overall, this is a pretty harmless, mediocre film, but it's elevated because it's a video game movie and they almost always suck. At number nine is Tomb Raider. No, not the Angelina Jolie one. The Alicia Vikander film that only went one and done. This was the new Tomb Raider, the new Lara Croft, where she had a trilogy of games that kept getting more mediocre as they went, with the first one I think being the best. The movie very much emulates the first film as far as Alicia Vikander looking like her. The story plays out very similarly and it is a mediocre film from start to finish. Not bad, I don't think. This one's not bad. It's just so incredibly forgettable. In fact, I can't even specifically point out a single moment from this movie. And I saw it. Action, characters, setting, all just kind of there, all getting the job done, emulating that first game. But again, if people were to ask me, should I watch the movie? I'd say, no, play the video game. It's better all across the board. In the number eight spot is Detective Pikachu. Don't even really like this movie, but it's higher on the list because I love Pokemon. I'm a sucker for a Pokemon. I celebrate most of the Pocket Monster catalog. And I also really like Ryan Reynolds' whole shtick. Although the two shan't cross ever. This was a terrible abomination, having Reynolds voice Pikachu and they give a reason for why. I don't care, it's unnatural, man. I don't like the look of that. I wanna hear Pika Pika come out of the mouth. Not some wise cracking Deadpool jokes. But on the pro side, the design of the Pokemon in this is fantastic. I love the real world interpretation of these creatures. There is a style to them. Obviously, they don't look like super lifelike. They did with Pokemon what Disney refused to do with their live action animated films. They kept them full of emotion. They have characteristics, they have personality traits, unlike the stone cold, dead eyed Lion King abomination. The movie has a great setting. There are a ton of Pokemon in this thing. Some great locations and vistas throughout. It's got a likable lead. There is some emotional heart at the core of this thing. And so why I could not jive with the whole Ryan Reynolds Pikachu combination, I get why people really enjoy this one. And uh, yeah, that's why it's a little higher on my list. At number seven, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Bigger, louder, more characters, not necessarily better. 
Especially when 10 minutes is dedicated to a Bridezilla freakout that doesn't have any of the main characters, and we're just along for the ride for some reason. <laughs> movie could have used some editing. If they would have trimmed this down a little tighter, we would have had a better movie, and it would have rised higher in this ranking. But as it stands, it's colorful, it's got knuckles in it, it brings tails into the mix. Dr. Wily's back. I love Jim Carrey as this character. I mean, I really like Jim Carrey as pretty much every character. This is a solid flick though, not one I necessarily want to revisit anytime soon, but it was a solid one and done watch. And I do have some excitement for number three to see what they do with Shadow the Hedgehog and whoever else they bring into the fold. In the number six slot, we're back at Tomb Raider. This time it is the Angelina Jolie version. It's it's, it's a schlocky, fun, 90s action vehicle at the end of the day. Jolie not only physically embodies this character looking like a full-grown meal, but she also has that personality, that snarkiness, that English charm, the no-nonsense way she tackles these tombs. There's a good amount of action in this. Love the gunplay, love the robot thing she fights at one point. There's also a great YouTube music video that accompanies this film. With Elevation being the big song that came out around this time. Just, just a banger of a song. I'd like to point out that so far every movie on this list I would never go back and re-watch. And that again screams volumes about how bad this genre of film is so far. In the number five spot, we have Resident Evil, based on the massively successful Camcom video game franchise. There doesn't seem to be an end in sight. They keep knocking these things out and keep remaking the old ones. But here we are with the first hot mess of a film franchise, Resident Evil. This is essentially the horror equivalent of Fast and the Furious. These movies keep existing. They keep getting louder and dumber as they go on. The plots go out the window. It's nonsense, and it has this hardcore fan base that eats them up. Mila Jovovich's Alice is solid in these movies. She's got that action heroine persona down. I loved her from Fifth Element. I love her here as well. She's somehow selling me that this 90 pound soaking wet supermodel can kick a lot of zombie ass, and that's impressive. That shows you she's got that it factor. Michelle Rodriguez is also in this playing Michelle Rodriguez as she always does. This movie goes far more into the action than the games really do. Those games are more survival horror, at least in the early iterations where this movie kind of sits. But it does have a lot of callbacks to the Umbrella Corporation, to those evil demon dogs. And then it has this iconic moment in the film that everybody knows, even if they haven't seen the movie, which is this hallway of death with laser grids coming at the characters. And at first it's realistically achievable to get across these things. But then at the end, it's just a big fuck you. It's like, nope, you're done. There, there's no way to get through this griddle of lasers. First ride's not perfect by any means, but it's a solid time. It's a good ride. It's about an hour 40 long, rated R, some good violence and gore, but it's only gonna go downhill from here as far as the Resident Evil films go. Mortal Kombat! In the fourth spot, we have the ultra schlocky, ultra corny Mortal Kombat from the 90s. It's like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And that's not a bad thing. It knows what it is. It's having fun. It's cracking one-liners constantly. Callbacks to the game left and right. You have Shang Tsung hosting the tournament, bringing in the champions that Raiden has selected. Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Katana, Liu Kang. The whole crew is here. I mean, not the whole crew. There's been a million Mortal Kombat characters, but a good chunk from the first and second game make an appearance. You got Jax in the mix. You got Reptile in there. And it ends on a cliffhanger with the promise of more to come. And it probably shouldn't have ended like that. Maybe should have cut the whole bad guy bursting out of the mountain saying to be continued in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. One of the worst sequels ever. Hilarious, by the way, fun to watch, but not good in any shape or form. Mortal Kombat had an identity though, and it knocked it out of the park. The theme song alone for this game is so iconic that they would continue to go back to this well all these years later. It was recently in a commercial for the last Mortal Kombat game. I'm not, I can't remember if they used it in the new movie, the new reboot, but uh, yeah, that's not on here because I found that movie to be just miserable across the board. 
at least with this 90s one, it embraces the campiness and it goes all in with it. It's a fun time. Making it PG-13 was definitely a flex, not one that I agreed with, especially when the game is known for more than anything else to be incredibly violent and creative with its fatalities. Still, these are video game movies, folks. We don't have a lot of good options. In the number three spot, we have the blue blur, Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, we've made it to the top three. These are all movies that I think are actually pretty good. Sonic the Hedgehog, a movie that by all accounts was going to be a complete shit show when that first trailer dropped and we saw the freakish abomination that they designed. Some people, conspiracy theorists, say that this was all intentional to drum up controversy and to get people excited. I don't think so. I don't think you had to do that with Sonic the Hedgehog. He's a pretty known mascot for Sega. There was no need to make this fake, ugly CG rendering. And also the animators, the company that worked on it, they would argue up and down the block that that was not the case because they put in extra innings to get that shit out the door right. The final product is solid. I like Ben Schwartz. He does good with this character. He's zany, he's off the wall, quite literally jumping off walls. He loves his chili dogs. He's got his human companion friend. It's all, it's all working very well, but again, what elevates this material is Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik, AKA Dr. Eggman. He's got his technology, he's got the stash and he's got the attitude. I appreciated the action scenes, how they showcase the blue blur speed by slowing time down, doing the whole Quicksilver-esque X-Men shot where he's going through a bar, taking hats off, pushing chairs away so people fall. It's all executed very well. And this thing moves very quick, no pun intended. It is a fast moving film. Unlike Sonic 2, there doesn't feel like a lot of downtime wasted here. It's a fun buddy road trip film featuring Sonic, giving a little bit of lore in the background, but otherwise a solid family flick. Gran Turismo has no right to being as good as it was. What the heck happened? They made a real movie here? And it's under the banner of Sony Entertainment, who's made garbage film after garbage film in recent years. Here we have one that's an underdog Rocky story about a dude who's good at the video game Gran Turismo. He wins the contest and this is the true story of how he rose the ranks to be an actual driver. It's almost a cheat to put this on the list because even though it is based on the video game, it's also not based on the, it's based on like the events surrounding the video game. So I can understand if you're like, no, this doesn't count. But listen, it's called Gran Turismo. It is centrally focused on the PlayStation exclusive and how this young man was able to take the simulator, put it to use and actually become a real fully fledged driver. David Harbour is terrific in this. He plays the coach. The main actor here, Archie, he plays a very sympathetic, likable lead, which was a tad different than the role he did after this film, Saltburn. I was like, is this the same guy? Is this the same actor? Well done. The film had so many opportunities to be half-assed and not really do anything other than cash in on the name, and it did the opposite. There's tons of racing in this film, far more than I thought. I figured maybe a beginning race and then the final ending one. No, there's like four or five pretty intense racing sequences. There's just a lot packed into this movie. You can tell real time and dedication was put into it and the final product is better for it. Definitely don't sleep on Gran Turismo if you're looking for a good underdog flick. In the number one spot is Illuminations, the Super Mario Brothers movie. I actually don't think this is a better movie than Gran Turismo, but I enjoy it more. It's an easier film to watch. It's an hour and a half, colorful as hell. It's got so many memorable, iconic characters from the Mario franchise that you just can't help but look at every single frame of this film to see what you might have missed. Not only is Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Bowser, and a, a, like a plethora of other characters in this, you also have characters from Donkey Kong. You get Mario Kart references. This is a video game nerd's dream come to life. Visually love them or hate them, Illumination makes some pretty eye-popping flicks. You might not like their designs, but I think it works wonders for this. The music from the games is present across the board. This is a far cry from that garbage Super Mario Brothers movie I had to go to theaters and watch when I was a kid. I can tell you that much. Seeing the Mushroom Kingdom brought to life will put a smile on even the grouchiest person's face. Believe me, I know. But on top of that is just the promise of what's to come next. 
the expanded world that Nintendo can bring forward with franchises like Zelda, with Metroid, Kirby, Pokemon could even come into this. There, there is just a lot that they can do. And then, of course, we all culminated together for a Smash Brothers film. This is just in my head canon. That doesn't seem to be the route Nintendo's going. I'm pretty sure the Zelda movie they're making is live action. And that, that makes me die a little inside. Because I would freaking love if they made a Zelda Wind Waker film in the style of this. Even though you could have found thousands of people that could have done a better Mario impression than what Chris Pratt brings to it, he's fine here which I know isn't, isn't a great compliment, but he's serviceable. You do have the name recognition. But then you have Bowser played by Jack Black, who just steals every scene he's in. I also like Charlie Day as Luigi. Anya Taylor-Joy, fine, serviceable Peach. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong somehow works better than it probably should. I just, I, I'm a sucker for this one. Yeah, the story is loose, it's stupid, but I'm not sure if you've played the games before, there's no story at all. So the fact that they even stitched anything together, that's fine. I'm here for the environments, I'm here for that music, I'm here for the action set pieces, and Mario Brothers absolutely 100% delivered. There you have it, my top 10 video game movies of all time, some of which I don't even like that much. That's how bad the genre is. Let me hear from you though. I wanna see your top 10 below. Do you agree with my list one to one? I can't imagine that's the case and that's fine. Movies are subjective. We all have our own unique, beautiful butterfly takes and I wanna see yours below. Please think about subscribing to the channel. As I stated, ten, top 10s every week, plus all the movie reviews, rants, and things you could possibly want. Like this video if you liked it. If you love the channel, if you love what I'm doing as a one-man operation who has a full-time job and family outside of this, maybe think about supporting me at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's a dollar tier, a $5, $30, whatever you want to give, and there's exclusives. There's over 300 videos at your fingertips when you join up. Last thing I'll say is I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, that I'm trying to build up. It's ranting about first world problems. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to help you get through the day, and hopefully some of these videos do. All right, I'll see you next time. Take care.